Baseball and classic cars, they go hand in hand, the American dream. We're uh, gonna talk to Jim Peters about his uh, Superbird and the Superbird story. So come on in, Jim. This is Jim, say hi to Jim, this is our intro. Good morning. How's it going, Jim? Pretty good, sir, how are you? Good, good. Good, great day today. What's your favorite car? Uh, let me think about this. Uh, how about a 1970 Roadrunner Superbird? <laughs> there I, you go. I, we'll say that. So you're gonna tell us a story about that, right? Absolutely. Our co-host, Barney Fife, the duck. Okay, he's gonna be just sitting in on, on it. You won't see him too much. He, he doesn't speak much. That's awesome. But uh, yeah, Barney Fife will be sitting on the Chevrolet coasters. Um, yeah, I was the original owner of a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird. It had a 440 um, six pack. I think they call it six barrel actually with a Plymouth. I learned that the other day, four speed. Uh, I bought it new. Um, Great car. Back at that time, they were having a hard time pushing a radical design out the door like that. So they uh, they really discounted the car and they actually ended up getting it, like I say, for around $3,400. Um, it was very fast. It uh, obviously was designed for NASCAR racing. Uh, Chrysler had to produce uh, 1900 minimum to call it a stock car, street car, so they could race it on the high speed tracks. And it was just about 10 miles an hour faster than most of the other cars. So a lot of the other manufacturers really protested about this car. I think it only raced one year, maybe two years out on the track. So at any rate, I owned the car for two years. I sold the car, unfortunately, big mistake. Uh, and about a year after I had sold the car, I got a phone call from someone saying, I think your car is in an impound yard in Mount Clemens. And sure enough, it was my car and it had been stolen and it was uh, somewhat destroyed. Parts of it uh, were broken, the gauges were broken, the front end, the wing was gone. Uh, so bottom line is I contacted um, AAA and for the price, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was between three and $500. I bought this car back from AAA and began a rebuild process. So at that time, the parts were um, readily available and at a reasonable price, I put the car back together and in 1974, actually took it to uh, Cobo Hall for Autorama and I have a picture of it at, uh, at Autorama. Um, so once again, that was in 1974. And then once again, unfortunately, I sold it in 1975. I thought I was making some money on it and I sold it in 1975. So I hadn't seen the car since 1975. How much did you sell it for? Do you I remember? sold it for $4,000. Okay. <laughs> thinking, oh boy, you know, I'm making a lot of money. Um, anyway, so once again, that was in 1975. So two years ago, which would have been 37 years past that point, uh, 37 or 47 years past that point, um, I decided to try to find it on a Sunday night. It was in 2022. I decided to try to find the car. And um, once again, I think it was 45 years. It was, it was that, that long. And um, so I went on a Roadrunner site and said I'm trying to find my Superbird. I didn't have the VIN number, I didn't have any other information. Uh, and so my phone lit up. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, a Superbird, somebody's trying to find us. So this gentleman contacted me and said, you should be on lost muscle cars. And if you had a picture, please send it to me. I'll help you find it. Bottom line is within one hour, I was contacted by someone that said, I think I have your car. And sure enough, bottom line is, this gentleman has my Superbird. So. We spoke the next day and decided to get together and he was kind enough to take me over or invite me over to his home and uh, out in North Branch and uh, I was reunited with my car. And so he's a real big time Mopar fan. Um, he actually has two Superbirds. He has my yellow one and he has a green one. Uh, and he was kind enough to bring them over here and um, had a photographer here and we had a a real nice party that day and so forth. He bought both Superbirds over here and he's been a first class gentleman. I can't think of anybody better than Dale to own this car. He's just taken great, great care of it. And did he did he let you drive it? Did you say something? Yes, about he did. It? When okay. he was here, he said, come on, let's go for a drive. And I was like, mm, I was kind of very nervous to get behind the wheel of that thing. And uh, we did take it out on M15 and uh, we did 
we put it through its paces, put it that way. <laughs> what it was made for. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, we didn't, you know, of course it's a 55 mile hour zone. We went a little bit faster than yeah, that. Yeah, nobody but, needs to know. But yeah, nobody <laughs> needs to know exactly what it was. But it was safe and it was clear, so, you know, it was, uh, it was a good, uh, it was a good move, but it was a great okay, day. Let's uh, point out some of these pictures here and right. tell me a little bit about okay. them. We'll, we'll just kind of walk around and, and see what's up. Okay, well, uh, do you want to start with the 1972? Yeah, let's start with... this, this picture was taken in 1972 when I first owned the car. Right. It's, it's out in Lapeer on Lake Nepissing. And uh, that was me standing by the car down by the lake. And once again, that was in... Uh, 1972. Okay. Just before I sold it. Just before you sold it. The first time. He sold those shorts too. Yeah, I did. <laughs> you burned them. You burned them. And, uh, okay, so uh, this is the second time I owned it. Now, this was in 1974. This is the, after uh, you, you rebuilt it. After it was rebuilt okay. and I bought it back. And then, and in fact, you can see on the nose right there, the blackout is not on the nose. I hadn't gotten to that yet. Okay. And so, um, this, once again, was in the Autoram at 1974. So, there's a little story here with this spoiler that's on the front yep. of it. Uh, at one time, I got a little close to a curb and bent it, so I actually made this piece and put it on the car. I, re I remade the spoiler. So, when I was reunited with the car, <laughs> I told the uh, owner, the current owner, that I had made that spoiler. He actually took it off and had a new one made and gave me that spoiler. Right. So that spoiler was, was once again, something I made 50 years ago. It was on the car in that picture. It's right, right. So yeah. Dale was kind enough to, to take give it, it off to and you. have a new one made and say, here, here's part of your car. And then was this your sign at this the sign, Autorama? Yeah, this sign was at... Um, the Autorama? At Autorama. Okay. It's kind of sitting here on the side. Okay. There's some uh, in, incorrect information when it says 500 made. That was incorrect. It was over 1,940 cars. Right. Uh, Superbirds that were made. But it, but it could have been that configuration. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's true it, because yeah. from what I understand, the 446 pack four speed, there was only like around 600 made of the right. 446 pack right. four speeds. Right. So it's, so. it's probably... Uh, pretty pretty accurate yeah it's within reason yeah uh, being accurate okay and this clock uh is the superbird coming down my driveway uh, and the day that dale brought the car over uh for our super oh, okay day here. yeah not you guys will see some pictures so of dale's that. driving the car down the driveway and bringing the car up and you can see the different looking spoiler on there a little sure. bit bigger spoiler and this is the day that once again that he brought the yellow one, which this was my car. He also has a green one. They brought two of them over that day. Okay. So, I mean, my story was uh, 47 years. It was 47 years that I hadn't seen the car. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with social media now uh, and, the, and a lot of enthusiasts that are online, um, I was able to find it. And, and uh, crazy enough, it was within one hour I found that car. Right. So it was just, uh, I'd say don't give up, you know, be, be persistent and... Be patient, right? You know, you may find it. So, so, so uh, another thing I know about you is uh, that I learned about you is you are a big Tiger baseball fan. Do yes, you, I am. How come? Mm -hmm. Well, I played a lot of baseball. Well, first of all, my dad was a, was a big Tiger. In fact, my grandfather at one time was courted by the Tigers by George Mullen to come and sign and play uh, play for the Tigers. So it kind of has come down through the family through the generations. Okay, awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, I really appreciate it. And, uh... Barney Fife made a comment to me. Are you ashamed about being seen with me? He is, but can you blame him? So we're gonna we're gonna wait for the game to start here at the Ambets Field.